So over the last couple of days, I have been thinking. With all of the content that's been pushed at us every week and all of the lessons, I think it's important that we just take a little step back for a second and really help each other out with this because I do think sometimes there is being so much thrown at us at a weekly basis that it is very easy to become intimidated by that. We become less motivated, we feel like we are never going to be good enough and so if we feel that way then how are we supposed to practice? And this brings me to my first important point. Never ever give up, please don't give up before you've even given yourself a chance. Learning how to practice and what to practice takes practice. So please do me a huge favor and the next time you feel bad about where you are personally at with your playing, just embrace that, okay? Because the sooner you embrace it and see these challenges as opportunities, the quicker you can move on and the more enjoyable and productive your practice time will become. So where do you start with all of this? Well, it's super important that you find yourself a good teacher and age is definitely not an excuse here, right? I myself will always be a student before a teacher and it's just a fact that I would not have gotten this far without those who were more experienced than me. A teacher should guide you, they should support you in every aspect of what you do and when you come out of each lesson, you should feel inspired, you should feel like you've improved and you should want to go home and practice. Now I'll talk about how to practice in just a sec, but in terms of what to practice, this is where books become invaluable, okay, and absolutely priceless. I mean, if you just look at what I have here on my music stand at the moment, we've got All American Drummer, Stick Control, I've got a new breed, which I haven't into, I've only dabbled uh, in this. I haven't even got into it properly yet. And I also have um, the Encyclopedia of Double Bass Drumming as well, which is a fantastic book. And this is just to name a few, of course, there are so many wonderful books out there. Now, this is where you're reading comes into play, okay? Now, I'm not saying you have to be an expert in reading. I'm certainly not. Some of my students teach me things about reading I didn't even know about, okay? But I understand enough to get me the results that I need. So make sure you find a teacher that's definitely covering the basics of sight reading for you, as this will definitely serve you well in the future. Now, you probably will have guessed at this stage that I am a huge advocate of online lessons. Now, my advice to you in terms of that is again to take it all in. Listen, the fact is this, you learn from doing, so why not get stuck into these things and try them? Uh, sign up to Drumeo for a year, okay, explore that. Then you might go on to the following year, you might sign up to Mike's Lessons or a site similar to that. There's Drum Channel as well. There's so many great, um, opportunities to learn and soak in this information, okay? The key is to be patient and take your time with this stuff. Now with all of this wonderful information at our fingertips, how do we actually practice? In my opinion, this all comes down to time management. For example, I keep a log book in my, a practice log in my phone, okay? So just to give you an example, for this morning's practice, from nine o'clock to 9.30, I'm gonna be running all um, solos from one to six within this book, okay? Six being the newest one I'm working on, so that's gonna be my uh, warm up from 10 to, or sorry, from 9.30 to 10 o'clock, I'm continuing a intermediate quintuplet course online with Annika Niles. From 10 to 10.30, I have uh, a couple of 5-4 grooves and fills that I'm going to be working on. From 10.30 to 11, I have a new 16th note triplet fill that I'm going to be working on. And from 11 to 12, I have a bunch of independence exercises that in 6-8 and then I go off to teach for the rest of the day. Then what will happen is when I come home I'll reflect on the practice today, I'll do a similar practice log out based on that and I'll just make little notes and then I'll go at it again tomorrow. Now this is kind of a daily routine for me and it has been for the last couple of, couple of years and I find it's really really beneficial. Now this of course doesn't work for everybody 
and everyone has their own routine and their own way of practice. The point is it's structured and I'm being very specific. I'm taking my time and I'm just getting each exercise where I want to at that specific time and then I'm moving on. Okay, so I hope that that gives you some insight into my own practice routine and you can take something from that. Now my last bit of advice would be to learn to love this process. Are you going to sit on your phone, scroll through an Instagram feed and look at drummers play a 30 second clip of this fancy new chop that they've learned that probably in reality took them an hour to capture? Or are you gonna stop feeling sorry for yourself, sit behind this kit and start getting creative and start getting some quality practice time in. Are you going to spend what little time you have during the week to both record and edit your next drum cover instead of practicing and really owning that time that you've been gifted with? You need to find a balance and you can definitely do that by giving a little bit of time to everything. Now, yes, this is hard work, but remember what I said earlier, you only learn by doing, it's that simple. And of course, my favorite part in all of this is that I am on this journey too and I learn from all of you just as much as you learn from me so make sure you join in this discussion drop a comment below maybe fill us all in on your current practice routine and make sure you start engaging and talking to each other because that is what this is all about and you never know you might just learn something valuable from somebody else I hope you took something positive from this video and I'll be back here soon with more lessons discussions and all of that good stuff. Talk to you very soon. Here's something else you're going to discover in giving. Something that's very important. Give thanks. Giving thanks creates power. Give thanks for your house. Give thanks for your apartment, for your car, for your family, for your health, for your relationships, for what you have. When we focus on something, it expands. When you're giving thanks, when you're showing the spirit of gratitude for what I got. Not that you're satisfied with it, but you're grateful for what you got. Whatever you focus on, that's what you're going to continue to multiply and expand in your life. But if you focus on what you don't have, if all you can do is point out the negative things in your life, whatever you focus on, you're going to expand that. Some people, all they can do is complain. That's all they can do. They can't find anything to say good about life or about anybody else. Every time they open their mouth, that's what their minds are consumed with, and that's all they're producing in their lives. And these are people that you don't want to be around. Develop a spirit of gratitude. I'm thankful for that.